So you just got your Leica and you're starting to build out your lens kit. So you go and you hop on a website, maybe it's a photography website, maybe it's Leica's website or even your local camera store. And you recognize numbers like 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 90 millimeter. But then you start seeing some really weird names. In this video, I'm gonna break down what these names mean and just get this weird like a language into your vocabulary. So let's jump in and let's talk about lenses. And if this is your first time here, my name is Dave. I'm a photographer and videographer from the Bay Area of California. I post two videos a week unless something goes horribly wrong. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Let's start this off by talking about the modern names for lenses. And because of Leica's great history, there are definitely lenses that do not exist anymore, names that they don't use anymore. Now those things could make a comeback one day, but as of right now, we're just gonna stick to what's relevant in 2024. The first thing you need to understand about how Leica names their lenses is that for the most part, the name correlates to the f-stop, meaning that the name is going to tell you what the lowest f-stop possible will be. And with that in mind, we will start this list off by looking at the highest, lowest f-stop and then working our way to their fastest lenses that they've ever made. And in just some disappointing news, I don't have most of the lenses that I'm gonna talk about today, so we're just gonna be having a conversation here, but I'll show you some of the ones that I do have so you can see it lived out in real life. So in the lenses that you are going to find in your camera shop, whether it's used lenses, and some of these might still be new lenses, but not all of them, but just overall in what modern lenses are available, you're gonna see three to kick this list off, the Elmar, the Super Elmar, and the Elmerit. Why three to kick it off? Because the Elmar and Super Elmar never had like a completely definable f-stop, they were made at like 3.5, 3.8, I think maybe even f4. And then there's the Elmerit, which is probably one of the most popular lenses in the lineup, especially the 28 Elmerit. The Elmerit is a 2.8 lens. The other two, the Elmar and the Super Elmar, are somewhere between like three and four. But these lenses are going to be the ones that are above f2.8. And yes, Leica has made lenses in the past that are at f4, and I think even above that. I believe the Hector is like a 4.5, but that's not a modern lens at all, and it's not a very relevant lens to this conversation. At 2.8, you've got the Elmerit, that word, Elmerit. If you see that on any lens, it's going to mean that that lens is an f2.8. Moving right along down the list, we're gonna to come to a modern line that is relatively inexpensive for Leica lenses, but they made several of these lenses. I actually have one. This is a Sumerit. And this one is a 90, but I believe they made this lens at 35, 50, 75, and 90. This is faster than an Elmerit, but it's not quite the next level. This 90 in particular goes down to F2.5, which is a really weird F-stop to have as you're wide open. There's also another one out there that's 2.4, which was an updated version of this lens. These are really great lenses that you can typically pick up a little cheaper than you can the other line. They don't always get the best reviews, but in my experience, this Sumerit is incredibly sharp. At f2.5, nobody is looking for the most extremely wide open shots, but for me, this gets the job done. So the Sumerit lenses are going to be around that f2.5 and f2.4. Now let's talk about what is probably their most iconic and most popular line, the Sumacron. I have a 28 Sumacron and it is a fantastic lens. The Sumacrons all go down to f2. So if you see the word Sumacron, it means f2. I think that the Sumacron is probably like his most well-rounded and well-received lens on any line. F2 is more than enough for almost every application, and this line of lenses may not have the character of the Sumalux or some other lenses, but they definitely have the sharpness and get the job done. Nearly every Leica owner has a Sumacron in their bag or has at one time had a Sumacron in their bag. And there's different versions over the many generations of lenses like the Sumacron. I believe the 50 is on version five or six now, but that's what you get when you have 75 years of lenses behind you. 
Next up on our list is the Sumalux. A Sumalux lens goes down to f1.4. The Sumalux has a lot of character and it's really an iconic look. When I think of the Leica look, I think of a Sumalux. There's so much character sharpness and the fact that 1.4 you get just insane contrast and separation. This to me is like the pinnacle of Leica and that's my thing. Like I love shooting Sumalux lenses. I have a 35 and a 50, but these Sumalux lenses are just really fantastic. So again, we've gotten down to 1.4. And as I mentioned a second ago, this is not just about the M. If we look at my Q2 monochrome here, we see that this is also a Sumalux lens. This is a 28 Sumalux, which means it goes down to F1.4, right? Not quite. Though this is a Sumalux, it goes down to 1.7. So now we can kind of say that below two, but not down to one, is a Sumalux. So 1.7 is Sumalux the same way 1.4 is Sumalux. Now there have been tests done that demonstrate the differences between say this Sumalux and the M Sumalux. I'll link a video right here that led me to sell my Q2. This is a Q2 monochrome, different animal. The Leica Sumalux is just a fantastic lens down at 1.4. If we keep going, there's actually still one more left on this list and it is called the Noctilux. And it goes down to 0.95, though there's also a version that goes down to one and also a version that goes down to 1.2. These are more like guiding principles than they are laws to Leica. The Noctilux is a very, character lens with a really interesting look. Some people absolutely love them. Some people dislike them. The cost is very high. So it's not a Leica lens you really see every single day. So whether you're on the M system or the SL system or the Q or even some of their point and shoots, these are the names you're going to see. And there are a few other modern names out there, like on the Leica Sofort, you've got the Sumar, perhaps could be a Sumerit, and maybe Sumar is just short for that because this is a 2.4, which if you remember correctly is the Sumerit. So again, we're talking about guiding principles, not necessarily like hard and fast rules. Prior to the M line, there was a line of lenses for the screw-in Leica cameras. I have one here. This is a Leica 50 Sumitar. This lens was made from 1939 to the mid 50s. There's also some names that were used prior on M cameras, as well as the screw-ins, like I mentioned earlier, the Hector. There was the Thambar, the Sumeron, other Elmars. And you get the idea. There's just a long history. I mean, we're talking about 75 years of lenses. Now, if I was to take a look a little more at my Leica lenses, there are two phrases I might see on the inside of the lens. The first one are the letters A-S-P-H, which means aspherical. On any of the modern Sumalux lenses, as well as Sumacrons, you might see the A-S-P-H, denoting that lens is aspherical. So let's talk about that for just a minute. An aspherical lens means that the lens glass elements on the inside, at least one of them, is actually aspherical. Prior to aspherical lenses, lenses were spherical. If you were to look at some vintage lenses that are not aspherical, you'll see a little bit more of a dreamier quality and then maybe some corner softness. The center might be punchy, but the edges are not. And that's just that round spherical design. When you get into aspherical lenses, you're gonna see a lot more even sharpness from edge to edge across the entire photo. An aspherical design will give you more consistency in your image. Might be a little less dreamy, but will be much sharper and much more consistent. Another string of letters you might see inside of your lens, and I do not have one of these lenses, though I hear really good things, are the letters A-P-O, APO, which stands for apochromatic or apochromatically corrected. When light enters the glass of a lens, the light wavelengths get separated until they end up back on the film plane or the sensor. Specifically, we're talking about the red wavelength. Green and blue kind of end up in the same spot, but red wavelengths are longer, so the red wavelength will end up in a different spot, and what this gives you is chromatic aberration. 
If you ever look at photos and you see that purple or green fringing on the edges of things, that's literally just the wavelengths of the light that came into your lens and hit your sensor or your film, causing that chromatic aberration. An Apo lens fixes that in the glass. The problem they've solved is mostly in longer lenses, like a 90, but even 50 can have this problem, which is why there are 50 millimeter Apo lenses. There's a 90 Apo lens. There's even a 135 Apo lens for the M. Apo lenses, Apo chromatically corrected lenses are typically very premium because of the manufacturing process and the research and development that goes into making lenses like this. It's at a much higher level than just a typical aspherical lens. There's also a few other words out there that you don't see as much. You might see the word tele, but you might be able to figure out that means telephoto. You'll see that on maybe something like the 135 I just mentioned a minute ago. That is a tele lens. There's even a tri or a vario, which is really just a zoom lens. It has variations or in the M system tri because there's three focal lengths that lens can do. Very easy names to figure out just by looking at them. With other camera brands, it's really easy to think, let's just get the best, fastest lenses possible because a lot of these brands pack their best tech in their best lenses. For instance, with the Canon L lenses that I used to use many years ago, that was their best lenses for the Canon system. With my Sony kit today, when I'm shooting that, the GM lenses are their best lenses with their best tech in those lenses. Leica, on the other hand, is a bit different. You kind of pick the lens by its character and the performance that it gives you, the look that it gives you. You might want a 50 millimeter aspherical sumo lux apochromatically corrected lens, but you're not going to find it. So as you're looking around, don't let F-stops tell you that a lens is not good or is good by that same definition. A lot of photographers that come to Leica come kind of with that same assumption that, oh, this lens is an F3, so it must be not a great lens. That is not the case with Leica. Learn to connect those names to the F-stop so you know what you're dealing with. Get in your head what an aspherical and an Apple lens are. And then start looking around for the type of character lens that you're looking for, because all Leica lenses produce a rendering that is unique and has a character of its own. Now, when you get out of the Leica lens lineup, you also see a bunch of fun sounding funny names like Nocton and Scopar and Biogon. They're just kind of the same mentality. They all just mean different things with different brands. So happy shopping. Find that Leica lens that works for you. I hope you found this video helpful. Drop your favorite Leica lens below. Let us know what it is and why. We'll turn this comment section into a buyer's guide. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.